In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about more of the tools that you can use to clean up your data, especially things that are helpful in getting in that kind of standardized, tidy format that makes it so easy to then work with ggplot and statistical modeling and other things with your data. So in the next series of lectures, we're going to talk about some more things that you can do with dplyr. So far, you've used a lot of different dplyr functions. Uh, you've, you've used rename to rename your columns, filter to filter down to certain rows, select to pick out columns, mutate to change a column or add on new columns, uh, group by and summarize to be able to get summaries of your data either as a whole or within certain groups in the data. So kind of the next step of useful functions I think to add are the ones that we'll cover in this chapter. Those include separate and unite, which we'll talk about separate in this video lecture and unite in the next one. Um, using different dplyr functions besides summarize with group by. So doing grouping first and then doing things like mutate or slice. And then finally, anti-join and semi-join. In an earlier video lecture, we talked about how you could use join to join two different data frames together. It turns out there's some functions you can use to kind of check and see what matches there are across two data frames without actually putting them together. So we'll cover how to use those because those can be quite helpful too. So we'll start in this lecture talking about separate. Sometimes you might end up with information in one column that's really kind of two separate pieces of information and you wanna get at those two separate pieces of information. One example we've seen in some of the data we were reading in was in the Ebola data frame. We had there a column that gave the country name and then whether it was cases or deaths. So that particular um, data frame had a few of these issues that kept it from being tidy, and we'll be exploring that some in the in-course exercise. But another thing, one of those things that kind of is going on there is that it's got these separate pieces of information in the same column, and we really would like to split those apart so we can work with those separately. Now, if you'll notice here, if you were explaining to somebody how to do this, there's an easy way to do it. You would say, just go every place where there's an underscore and that's where you're gonna make that division. And you'll put everything to the left of the underscore in one column and everything to the right in another column. We can tell R that same thing with the separate function. So I've got some slides here and you can use this to take notes, but let's go into R Studio to take a look at this. Make sure that you have tidyverse loaded. Uh, that will include dplyr and then next, if you would like to try this example, I've created a really small data frame here that's only using those four values in kind of the key. So if we take a look, you can see now we've got this very simple data frame where it's only got four rows, but it's got this case of things where we really would like to split it into two columns. So to do that, actually I'll start without piping and then I can show how to pipe. We can use the separate function, the first argument that that takes is data. So in this case, that's gonna be Ebola. The next thing is that we need to say which column we wanna split. The column we wanna split here is Ebola key. We can figure that out by going down and looking at our data frame to see where the name of the, the column is that we wanna split. Next, we need to say the names of the columns we wanna split it into, and that is the, the argument into. So this will be a, a vector of character strings as long as however many columns you want to split this into. In this case, this will split into two columns. We just got this one separator. The first column here will be country. And then the next column, this could be um, maybe like type for the data, whether it's giving cases or deaths. So I've picked these names. These will be the column names that we end up getting. So let's try running that. And you can see down here that has taken those columns and it split that one column into two separate ones. And these two separate ones have the names I specified with into, their country and then their type. The other thing we should put here, in this case, it did a good job of picking out what it should separate by, but it's safer if we also include the character that's the separator. So in this case, it's those underscores. So we can run that. We might have some cases sometimes where we have a different character. For example, it might be, uh, actually often it'll be a space. So let's try with space. 
All right, so in that case, we would change to specify that the separator is space. So let's look at the data frame that I've just run. You can see now they're separated by a space. So I've changed set to be a space, and now you can see that that works the same way. So let's look at how this would look if we pipe into it instead. So to pipe into it, we'll take out that first argument that we had, and instead of specifying it at the beginning of the call, we'll specify it before and then pipe in. Fix those. So you can see this works exactly the same way. All right, here is the generic code that you'll use for separate. Again, this won't run. This is just to show you the usage and the common arguments that you'll use. So you first want to put in the data frame that you want to use. Then you specify the name of the column in your data that you want to split. Because that is a column that exists in your data frame that you'll be calling, you do that without quotation marks. Then you say into. This will be a vector with the names of the columns that, that you want to use for those new columns that you create. So it's your new vector of column names for those two or more columns. And then finally, you can specify the character that you want to use for the split. Now, by default, it's taking off that original column when it does, does the separation. So where you have one, you end up with two, but you don't keep your original column. If you want to keep that, you can do remove equals false. So let's put that in here to take a look. Put that on its own line. So now we have three columns. When we do that, we keep that original column viewable like key, and we have the column that was split into. Another case that can come up is sometimes you will have observations in that column that don't have both parts, that don't have that split in the middle. So I've shown an example here, but we can go into R and try it too. So let's say for one of these, we're missing that final information. Now we can specify for separate where which side it should fill in with the missing values. So this could be right or left. So let's try fill equals right. And you can see now that it is filled in the, the right side of that separate in the case where there was not a separator. It's filled in that right side with a missing value. If we change and we do left, you can see now it has moved the single value that it had in that original over to the right-hand column and done a missing value on the left. In this case, this really looks like it's a country, so it probably would have made more sense to keep this right.